In this video we'll take a look at simplifying algebraic expressions with exponents. And in the first example we're asked to just simplify and to write all answers in a non-radical form. So non-radical form would mean we don't want to see a radical in the answer. We just want, want to see x or whatever the variable is to some exponent or some power. So the first one we've got the fifth root of x squared. Now the root here, the 5, is the denominator. And the 2 the is the power. So we would write that as x to the power of 2 fifths. So the top number in that fraction, in the exponent, is the power. And the bottom number, the denominator, is the root. So that's x to the 2 fifths. In b, to divide these two uh, radical expressions, I would first convert them to powers the same as I did here. So now when you don't see a root, it's automatically the square root. So this would be x to the power of 3 over 2. And this one would be x to the power of 4 over 3. The root is 3, so there would be a 3 here. Now, now next I would use the um, um, exponent law that says when you're dividing powers of the same base, you subtract the two exponents. Now, the two exponents do not have the same denominator. So the denominators are 2 and 3, so the least common denominator would be 6. So I would multiply this one by 3 top and bottom to make the denominator the 2 is 6. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times this 3 is this 9. I already have a 3 here, so to make that denominator 6, I would multiply that by 2. So I also multiply the 4 by 2 to make it 8. So now they have the same denominator, so we can subtract 8 6 from 9 6 and get 1 6. So that would be x to the power of 1 over 6. Uh, similar idea for c, except we're multiplying. So uh, the fifth root of x squared would be x to the 2 over 5 multiplied by x to the power of 4 over 3. Now in order to multiply, we add the exponent. So once again, I need to get a common denominator. The common denominator between 5 and 3 would be 15. So I multiply this by 3 to make that a 15. So 3 times 2 is 6. The denominator here is 3, so to make it a 15, I want to multiply by 5. So 4 times 5 would be 20. Now we're multiplying, so we add the two exponents. So 6 fifteenths and 20 fifteenths would be 26 fifteenths. So this would be x to the 26 fifteenths. For the second one here, we're asked to simplify each of the following and then evaluate for uh, x is negative 2 and y is 3. Now we could substitute negative 2 and 3 in right at the beginning, but that's generally longer and more complicated than simplifying first and then putting the numbers in. So it is generally better to simplify first. Now, remember, when you don't see a root, it's 2. And so I want to simplify this, just like I did the ones up here. Now, since it's 2, this would be x to the 4 over 2, y to the 8 over 2. So if it's the square root, you're really just dividing these exponents by 2 in order to, to uh, evaluate that root. So that's why the root of x to the 4th, y to the 8 would be x squared y to the 4th. Uh, 4 divided by 2 is this 2, and for the uh, y, 8 divided by 2 gives you the 4 here. And then, of course, it's also multiplied by the 5x squared. So we multiply the coefficients 5, and there's actually a 1 here, so 5 times 1 would be 5, and add the exponents. So 2 and 2 would be 4, and then we also already have this y to the 4th. Now we've got it simplified, so we would put the negative 2 in place of x and the 3 in place of y. So we need to evaluate uh, negative 2 to the 4th. That means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times a 4th negative 2, which is 16. And uh, 3 to the 4th is 81. That's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So we're multiplying 5 by 16 by 81, which is 6,480. Last example. Uh, again, now it's the cube root. So, but before we start dividing exponents by 3, just like we divided by 2 when it was a square root, we should really simplify what's in here first. So, uh, we're dividing this uh, x to the 4th, y to the 8th by negative 8 x, y squared. So we would divide the powers of x, divide the uh, powers of x and the powers of y. Remember, you subtract the exponents. There's actually a 1 here on the x, so 4 minus 1 would be 3. And y to the 8th divided by y squared, you subtract the exponent, so 8 minus 2 would be 6 over here. So that's how we can simplify what's underneath the, uh, the cube root.
Now we would take the cube root of each of these. So to take the cube root of x cubed, remember we divide this 3 by this 3, and the same for the y, the cube root of y is 6. We go 6 divided by 3 would be a, a power of 2 in the y. And negative 8 actually is a perfect cube. Uh, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And that's because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, three of them, uh, would equal negative 8. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and the cube root of negative 8 in the denominator is negative 2. Now we've simplified it so we can put the negative 2 and 3 in place of x and y. So putting negative 2 here in place of x and 3 in place of y. Now notice that we have a negative 2 here and a negative 2 in the bottom as well. So we actually could just divide out those negative 2s. And we're just left with 3 squared then. And so 3 squared is 9, so that would be the final answer. Now if you didn't see to divide this out, you actually could multiply the negative 2 by the 9 and divide it by negative 2, and then you still get 9. It still work out to exactly the same thing. And that's the end of the video.